I'll just keep talking and... Uh, hey, there we go. Okay, you can hear me now. We'll try that again, shall we? The Lord be with you. <laughs> Excellent. And so uh, an extra warm welcome uh, to St. James Church this morning, uh, particularly if you're a visitor. It's great to see you. I know there's lots of people away. I've just come back from holiday myself, so I really don't know what's going on. And you'll just have to bear with us as we kind of muddle it through. Okay. We're all good. Anyway, my name is Jeff. I'm the curate. If you're wondering who I am, I'm going to be leading this morning. Uh, Lucy, our rector, will be delivering the sermon on wisdom. And I can't imagine anybody else more suitably qualified uh, (laughs) to deal with that. Just a few notices as we come to the service. Firstly, just in case you're confused, it is not the 15th of August. It is the 18th. Sorry about that typo, but the rest of the information on the notice sheet is accurate. Just a couple of things to draw your attention to. Uh, the, I believe, the summer recital. Yes, this week's summer music recital. We have, at great expense, the legend, that is, John Watkins performing on organ, piano, and bassoon. So, uh, Sorry? All at once at the same time. So that is something to be looking forward to. We should hopefully have a packed out uh, audience for that one. So that will be on Thursday afternoon. And then, of course, the other one of great excitement this afternoon is our pet service. So if you have uh, pets uh, and you would like to bring them along, we'll be doing it outside. And so that should be good. So anything which is you know, fluffy and hopefully uh, an old cuddly. Or uh, my kids are trying to work out how they can bring our fish uh, along. I'm not sure that's going to happen. We'll see how it goes a little bit later on today. So, if you know anybody who would like to be part of that, please do invite them uh, to along and, and bring anything which is sort of uh, living and tame. And if you haven't got something like that, then do bring a, like a cuddly toy or or, or something stuffed. That would be great. Um, that's this afternoon at four o'clock. So just hold those, uh, those things in your prayers as we move forward. So let's just take a moment to be quiet and then we'll begin. The words should be on the screen just above you unless you have a, a service sheet. So some opening words of praise. We give thanks for the joy of creation, for all that is made and given for all that we shape and create, for the springing forth of new vision. We celebrate the flowering of hope. We give thanks for the fruits of the earth. We praise God for the goodness of growth. We give thanks for the vitality of recreation, for times of rest and stillness that renew us, for times of play and laughter that refresh us, for all that nourishes and restores our spirits. We celebrate the flowering of hope. We give thanks for the fruits of the earth. We give thanks for the depth of passion, for the vision that inspires our longing, for love that brings strength and tenderness, for all that touches our deepest core. We celebrate the flowering of hope. We give thanks for the fruits of the earth. We praise God for the goodness of growth. We give thanks for the rhythm of the seasons, for all that grows, blossoms and fades, for the seeds that are buried and spring again, for the constant renewal of life from the earth. We celebrate the flowering of hope. We give thanks for the fruits of the earth. We praise God for the goodness of growth. And we're going to stand and sing our opening hymn, Lord enthroned in heavenly splendor. If you're able to, please would you stand.
please do be seated as we come to a time of confession. And as we remember that we are people who are forgiven, who are treasured, who are loved, who are known by name by Almighty God, we come to a chance just to reflect upon the last week. Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So let's just keep silence and acknowledge the times when we have failed to trust God and to live out the fear and knowledge of God in our daily lives. For leaning on our own understanding rather than trusting you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For doing things in our own strength rather than by your Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For failing you in what we think or say or do, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And may the God of love and power forgive you from your sins, strengthen you with his power, and fill you afresh with his spirit. Amen. And the collect prayer today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our faith thankfulness may grow. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so now I'm going to hand over to John for a time of our sung worship. Thank you, Jeff. So um, this morning, as Jeff said, we are um, thinking about wisdom, uh, this heavenly wisdom. And we can only be wise if we look to God. So um, the two songs we're going to sing this morning are Strength Will Rise and All My Days I Will Sing the Song of Gladness. So I invite you to stand, if you're able, as we sing these two songs of worship.
what Jesus did on the cross, we can come to your word, we can come before your throne and we can worship you openly and freely from that wonderful gift of amazing grace. And now as we come to look at your word, I pray that you would speak to us through your word and that we would learn something new about you. As I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The first reading is taken from Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as an unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. And please, would you stand for our gospel reading? The reading is from the Gospel of John, <coughs> chapter 6, verses 51 to 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can this man Give us his flesh to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Lucy, who will lead us in our talk. Please do be seated. <clears throat> wisdom. We're going to be thinking about wisdom today and um, slightly perturbed by the opening comment by the curate. Because I, I think I've realised as I get older how little I know and understand. Perhaps that's what wisdom is. Perhaps wisdom is knowing that you don't know sometimes. Unlike my, um, our, the younger generation who think they know every... Sorry. My children think they know everything. And they tell me off all the time. But perhaps wisdom is knowing that I don't know everything. We're going to be thinking about God's wisdom this morning, so let's just pray as we start. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the wisdom that you, well, the fact that you are a God of wisdom, and Lord, help us as we explore this subject to learn more of you and your amazing um, plan for our lives, so that we could truly um, show your wisdom in all that we do. Amen. So a man who was wise was Einstein. I think, you know, one would say that he was a very clever man. And um, he didn't have a driver's license. So he had a chauffeur who drove him to and from each campus that he was speaking at. As they were driving along one day, a couple of months into the latest lecture tour, um, the chauffeur said to the brilliant scientist, you know, 
I've heard this lecture so many times that um, I could give it myself. So, um, well, Einstein thought, well, this is a challenge, and let's, let's try it, shall we? So the people at the next, because the people at the next university don't know what I look like. So you put on my clothes, and I'll wear your uniform and your cap, and when you get there, we'll introduce you as the great Einstein, Dr. Einstein. Well, everything went according to plan. Um, the chauffeur delivered the speech brilliantly on relativity, absolutely flawlessly. And Einstein, sitting at the back of the lecture hall, enjoyed it immensely. But there was something they hadn't thought of. The moderator of the lecture said, we've got 15 more minutes, just enough time for you to ask, some of you to ask Dr. Einstein a question. So a professor in the audience asked a very complicated technical question involving higher mathematical formulas and language that the chauffeur, of course, did not understand. But the chauffeur, he was wise. He was quick on his feet and he said, Sir, the solution to the problem is so simple that I'm really surprised you wouldn't even ask, that you'd even ask it. Anybody can answer a question that simple, even my chauffeur. Einstein might have been intelligent, but his chauffeur was obviously a wise man. So today we're thinking about the concept of wisdom, and often we talk about, don't we, the wisdom of age. In other words, as you experience life, you become more wise, but, or like me, you realize how little you know, and that's possibly wise in itself. But today I want us to think about God's call for us to live wise lives and what that actually might mean for us. Our passage from Ephesians started with this. Paul says, be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Be careful how you live, not as unwise people, as wise. So he's talking about the wisdom, not earthly wisdom, but the wisdom that comes from God, a spiritual wisdom. Because he goes on to say, so do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So what does Paul mean by this spiritual wisdom? And I want us this morning to explore this. And first I want us to look at what it means um, what we mean by God's wisdom, and then I want us to think of a few ways in which we can live out this wisdom. So firstly, what do we mean by God's wisdom? And the far, first point here is that the wisdom of God is so different from what we see as earthly wisdom, because God's wisdom sees the whole of the picture God's wisdom comes from the very heart of God, which we know is love. So the choices that God makes are sometimes very surprising to the choices that we would have made. If we want to choose somebody for a job, then the world would say that we should get the, best, the person with the best qualifications, someone with lots of experience of doing that. But if we look at God's greatest plan, sending his son Jesus Christ to save us, everything about this is surprising by worldly standards, isn't it? Everything looked doomed to fail. A teenage girl in a stable in a little known town, dare I mention this Christmas word again in its August, I've been thinking about it a lot this week already, a carpenter's son. And then consider the disciples Jesus chose to whom he would delegate his cause. Not exactly the most educated or high gr brow group of people, were they? Fishermen, tax collectors. Not the sort of people you would choose from worldly standards. But God's wisdom is greater than our understanding. But perhaps in human terms, the most foolish thing that God did and yet the most wise was the crucifixion. I'm going to have a look at 1 Corinthians 1, 21 to 24, and it should be up on your screen in a moment. 1 Corinthians 1, if you're looking it up. For since in God's wisdom, the world did not know God through wisdom. In other words, 
God rejected the possibility of salvation by human intellect and wisdom. We'll see why in a minute. God was pleased to save those who believe through the foolishness of the message preached. For the Jews ask for signs and the Greens seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. Yet to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is God's power and God's wisdom. In God's infinite wisdom, he chose a way of salvation through Christ that looks totally insane to us. No one on earth would have come up with a plan involving the brutal murder of the Son of God for sinners. Yet at precisely the most foolish-looking moment, God's wisdom triumphs. And at the point of his greatest weakness, God's power is unleashed. If we move on to verse 25, because God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human wisdom human strength. In God's all-wise plan, that was the perfect way to achieve the greatest goal. Verse 31, if we go on from in that. Therefore, as it is written, the one who boasts must boast in the Lord. This is what God's wisdom was aiming at. God, he was aiming for um, because he chose us, he purchased us, he called us, and he's given us everything. So we can do nothing about it ourselves. We can't be self-righteous because it's not about us. God's grace is not about us. It's not. It's God's giving it to us. So we do not boast in anything, but we boast in Jesus Christ. I cannot boast in anything, no gift, no power, no wisdom. What, what, where's that from? But I will boast in Jesus Christ. How, yeah, the song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. I will not boast in anything, no gift, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his death and resurrection. The one who boasts must boast in the Lord because we can do nothing by ourselves. The wisdom of God is all about what he has done for us. So God's wisdom is different from earthly wisdom. And then God's wisdom is perfect. In fact, the wisdom of God is so deep and so expansive that he does not and cannot increase in wisdom. We see this when Paul writes in Romans 11. For from him and through him and to him are all things. God cannot get any more wise than he is already. Wow. Is that awesome? Do you think? I think that's amazing. Utterly incredible. God's actions are always perfectly wise. He can get no more wise. We often need to upgrade things in, in life, don't we? We've, uh, this, this week in the Holt House has been a major step forward in that Andrew's upgraded his mobile phone. <laughs> Why? Because the apps stopped working. It was so old. Okay? So he needed to upgrade his phone because he couldn't use it. It was, it was useless. After seven years or eight years of the same model, it was useless. Nothing worked. And we need to do it regularly, don't we? Our, my laptop, probably in a couple more years' time, I'm going to need to upgrade because of the new technology that won't, means that, that it won't work anymore. But with God, there are no upgrades to his wisdom that are needed or even available. Because all wisdom comes from him, and his wisdom is perfect. So if God's wisdom is different from earthly wisdom, and his wisdom is perfect, how do we then live out this wisdom? How do we live as people, as wise people, um, as, as he asked us to in our passage from Ephesians? So firstly, we live in submission to the will of God and his plan for our lives. Proverbs 9, verse 10, which we've already had, 
um, in the beginning of the service says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Now, when we read this, we can get a bit confused because we don't like the word fear. Fear makes us think of being frightened. But actually, fearing the Lord is basically this. We recognize that he is the creator He's the master, he's our Lord, he's holy and awesome, and he calls the shots. We're not frightened of him, but we recognize him. We recognize him as he is. And in response to that, if we recognize who he is, we realize who we are and that we need need to submit ourselves to him and his plan for our lives. Without this, there is no wisdom. It starts with salvation and it continues in reverent humility. It's recognizing our own place, recognize that we do things not in our own strength, but in God's strength. Paul writes in his second letter of the Corinthians this, he said, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you because my power is made perfect in your weakness. Wisdom is allowing this to happen. Trying to do things in God's strength not our own. So we fear him, we submit to him, and we do things in his strength. And then secondly, we can see that wise living go, grows by receiving God's word. Wise living grows by receiving God's word. Psalm 19 says this, the instruction of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making the inexperienced wise. Nothing can match the Bible for showing you the mind of God. But as I, as I demonstrated this morning at nine o'clock, just opening it on one page and go, oh, okay, so I need to know the will of God today. I'll see what God's going to say to me. And I open the Bible just like that. That's not going to do it. And when I did it this morning, I opened it at Ezekiel and it talked about homes for priests. So I thought we might actually, that was God telling me that we needed to convert this into a nice little house for, you know, half of it for Jeff and half of it for me, I think. It'd be quite nice. No. It doesn't work like that, does it? We need to use our minds to look at God's word because we need to explore it. We need to explore it. We need to read those who, alongside it, read those who actually have have spent time exploring God's word because actually although God's word is unchanging we need to interpret it for for the situation that we're in now and the society that we're in now and we need to seek earnestly seek to find out what God's will is now it involves our brains seeking to know God's will through his word. But the more we do, the more wisdom will mark our lives. Psalm 1, this is my favorite um, psalm. I can honestly say this is my favorite psalm. Well, I don't know, Psalm 139 is quite good too. But yeah, but I do really like Psalm 1. Psalm 1 says this, blessed is the man or woman or blessed is the one, who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. I love that image. It reminds me of two trees. One, of, one is the willow tree, yeah? A willow tree planted by a river. And when it's planted by the river, it, its roots go down and it has the most amazing show of leaves and, and of, of branches falling down. The other is, is, I don't know if you know the plant, the gunnera, yeah? The gunnera, if you go around stately homes that have got ponds, you will see gunneras next to them. They're enormous. They're great big green plants. If you don't know, go and Google it when you get home. They are, I think they're beautiful. They're beautiful, but they need a shed load of water to survive, which is why they're in stately homes next to a lake. Because once they've got their roots down and if they're nourished by the water, then they will 
perform these um, and grow these enormous leaps. And it's like us, you know, we need to get our roots deep down in God's word to be able to grow as Christians. That's what wisdom, spiritual wisdom is. Paul says later in the passage that we read, do not get drunk on wine, but be filled with the spirit. Do not get drunk on wine, but be filled with the spirit. Allow the spirit of God to work in us, to bring forth the fruit of his spirit. We need to, as well as regularly receiving God's word, we need to be refilled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is not just for Pentecost Sunday. We need to regularly ask for God's Spirit to come and refill us daily. Daily, we need to ask for continued refilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can actually then not just be like a tree planted but be like a tree planted that then bears fruit the fruit of the spirit of love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness self-control so it's not only the word of God but it's the spirit of God that enables us to bear fruit So we receive wisdom through God's word and through his spirit. And then finally, we receive God's wisdom by asking for it specifically. In in the book of James, it says this. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives to all generously and without criticizing, for it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea driven and tossed by the wind. In other words... We don't come to God for a second opinion. (laughs) You don't come to God and say, God, I've decided to do this. Can you just confirm it's right? We should come to God and say, Lord, show me. Lord, show me the right path and I will follow. And by faith, we trust that God will guide us and show us the right way. Now, we could have a whole another sermon series on God's guidance, but in my experience, we're guided by God. Generally, God uses the same way to guide us. So if we've been guided by God one way, then he will do that again. So we look out for those signs of God's guidance. But the important thing is that we come to God and we say, God, show me the way. So today, we've seen that God is beyond our understanding. His wisdom is amazing, and his wisdom is beyond our earthly experience, and he is all wise. And we look to him to give us that wisdom so that we can be wise and live as children of light in this world. And we we work towards that wisdom by submitting to him by regularly receiving his word and contemplating it and understanding it by being filled by the Holy Spirit and by just saying, Lord, show me. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. So let us stand as we come to say the words of the creeds together. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in a human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 
And we remain standing as John and the music group lead us in Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice. Please do be seated as uh, we come to our time of intercessionary prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus, who is the living bread that saves us. Dear Lord God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, creator of heaven and earth, thank you, Lord. Jesus, you were there at the beginning and you will be there at the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the living bread. You are the only route to eternal life with the Father. You are the only true way to life. You willingly gave your life for me, for all of those gathered here today together in your name at St. James's, and for the whole wide world. Please be with us all and constantly remind us in our hearts and souls that we have no life without you. What joy, Lord Jesus, to be in communion with you. Remain in me, Lord. Remain in us, Lord. And may we all remain in you, serving you faithfully and lovingly. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Dear Lord God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, creator of heaven and earth, thank you, Lord. How can we ever thank you and praise you enough for all that you have done for us, for all that you continue to do for us, for all that, you're, that you will do for us? You willingly laid down your life for each and every one of us. Most of us wouldn't even do that for our families or closest friends, let alone people we don't even know or people that don't know us. How amazing you are. You are beyond our mortal comprehension. You are the living bread that came down from heaven. Your flesh is real food and your blood is real drink. The only nourishment that we really need, that your world really needs. May we feed on you and live. May we feed on you and be with you forever. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, creator of heaven and earth, thank you, Lord. You have given us an amazing world. Please help us to live wisely, recognizing your beauty all around us, each and every day. Please help us to make the most of every opportunity that you give us. Even when they may not initially appear as positive experiences, help us to learn from them, take from them, and make the best of all circumstances. May we perceive and understand your will in everything that we do. Help us to live wisely, always acting with integrity, hope, faith, and love. And when we don't, when we act foolishly or selfishly, rebuke us, reminding us that you and your son know and understand our weaknesses. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us your grace, mercy and peace. May we know your will and may we do your will. May your will be done throughout all of your creation. Lord, we earnestly give thanks to you and your son for giving us our lives, for giving us your world, and for always being there for us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us join together in the prayer that was taught to us by Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Paul is also on the sound desk. Oh, thank you, Nick, for stepping in there. So uh, we're going to stand and sing our final hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded. If you're able, please stand in this great rousing hymn as I come to uh, the end of our service.
And so today we've been thinking about wisdom. And if anything that Lucy uh, said spoke to you, if there's something that you perhaps would value prayer for, particularly in terms of prayers of wisdom, then one of us uh, would be delighted to be able to pray with you in our, our prayer corner just over there after the service. There would, of course, be tea and coffee and biscuits as usual, which will be served there. We would love to be able to spend a bit of time chatting with you, getting to know you then. Don't forget, it is the pet service this afternoon, so uh, if you need a bit of time to dash off and get those uh, elephants and horses ready, then obviously feel free to do so. So as we draw the service to a, a close, just a reminder of the reading from Ephesians, to continue that we should be speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to the God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forevermore. Amen.